I'm Bachrinder, and today we're gonna to be building this robot with a chainsaw for its weapon. Hey Tom. Hey. You're in our featured match tomorrow against Bot Grinder. What can we do to pause to make it able to fight that? What if we make it bigger? Like way bigger. Mm. Eight times bigger? Sounds about right. That should put it right around 250 pounds. A little over the weight limit, but we'll just add a mini bot. Sounds good to me. Done. And I don't think we can 3D print all this in time, so what if we just used old cage floors? I mean, if you've got them, let's do it. So uh, we're just trying to rig up the weapon throttle right now, basically to work on a servo so we could control it with our remote. So right now we got some zip ties rigged up just for a temporary solution. This, I'll say this is my first time building a fighting robot or having somebody help me build a fighting robot. I do the same stuff for drones. I use zip ties and glue. It's, it's awesome the crossover, the same tools and everything. Oh, more than enough. And even with the zip tie, without even gluing it, yeah, it's yeah. not going nowhere, as at least look at it right now. Not the most elegant, but it's gonna work. And we're eventually gonna put more zip ties. This is just a temporary solution. As you see, it's coming up. We'll have this a lot better. And now it's fully autonomous. No one has to do any holding of any switches. <laughs> yeah, all from the remote. Now to integrate this onto the robot. So we're pretty much waiting on chassis parts, mm -hmm. and then we can start slapping this guy together. Awesome. Just like Legos, right? Just like, like Legos, big, man. Just like Legos. Weird Legos. Legos. <laughs> Anytime you can attach a chase on or something, it's, it's going to be a great time. <laughs> oh, there you go, Steve. Yeah. One of my favorite sayings here has always been, it's not just good, it's good enough or creative solutions for stupid problems. Stupid solutions to creative problems, maybe? Sometimes both. Stupid solutions for stupid problems? Yep. <laughs> My specialty. <laughs> So we are bed. We made our uh, whoop guards. I yeah. guess. Like little so, in, in the ducks. drone world, to be called ducks. Yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> On certain drones, we have these little ducks, right? Go around Guard the, the propellers. propellers. And since this is kind of like a fake drone, we're gonna make a fake little <laughs> duck. So basically, we're on we're bending UHMW plastic, ultra high molecular weight plastic, to uh, make the duct. Which also, I think, doubles as a little bit of wheel protection too. Yeah, for it sure. Comes out from the side. I like that. That looks pretty dang good. Oh yeah. What do you think? You like that? I like that, yeah. Keeping it flush with the bottom too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Need two more of these guys. Yeah. I think we pull the shaft all the way out. Then we get the keys to line up in these guys, stick the key through while they're free, and then get the shaft back through. Okay. It's gonna be hard, but you got it. All right. <laughs> I believe. Get that mounted, and then we just need to think about a pivot. Yeah. What's what do you typically use for <laughs> for, <a chainsaw. laughs> for something like this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, typically, how do you typically uh, pivot your chainsaws? I think what we're probably gonna do is assume that there's no wiring in this zone. Drill some holes so that we can mount uh, one of these clevis style things so this will mount on the bottom there and that will sit on a pivot here so we'll 3d print something to like go in between and to screw onto there mm -hmm. we want it to like naturally be up so that when the servo goes it pulls it down mm -hmm. so we will probably either do like a rigid attachment from the servo to this, we can pull the whatever this is mm -hmm. off and use the holes to like attach a rod. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Directly underneath it. Cool, cool. That's why we checked. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Just gonna plug her on in. We've got Link. It's gonna walk backwards. Time to run for the hills. Here's a little loose. Nah. It doesn't work. Not thinking it's so much of a torque issue. There's binding in the system somewhere, so an abundance of friction where it doesn't belong. So there's so much flex in the system and it needs rigidity and it doesn't have it. Before we added this additional stage of gearing, it just didn't have the oomph to get to the point where we needed the rigidity. 
But now that it has the oomph, it's revealed our next problem. It's dummy big, and it's wood, and it's stupid. It's so stupid. I think making it from wood and huge might be a detriment. It's gonna get a lot uglier inside as we hack more junk into it to try and get it to work. Small paws is ugly on the inside too. That makes me feel better. <laughs> so we got the frame all cut out. Yep. Top and bottom. It drives, we tested it out. Put the battery and it drives around. So that's a load off. Pretty much the only thing left is the weapon. We know all the components, like we've got our chainsaw. Servo works for the chainsaw. Works via remote, <laughs> elegant solution. And we're working on getting all the pivoting working. So when the servo pulls it down, we can like do a chainsawing action. But that's really it. It's just making sure the geo's right for that, setting the endpoints for the servo, and we should be good to go. I kept putting everything on backwards. That is my first buy, you know what I mean? It's my first robot I try to build. So I'm gonna take everything back off and put it back together the right way. Yeah, you pretty much put them together backwards that's even on your 15th robot. <laughs> I never ran a pause with the butterfly net. But your like signature is kind of soft, goofy weapons. Ridiculous weapons, yeah. I heard we're fighting drones, so I want to try to catch them. As I want to see if I can pull a hyper shock and knock a drone out of the sky. Um, I'm not sure what's wrong with it just yet. I just wanted to confirm that it wasn't my electronic stuff. I believe in you, Arm. Okay, well, at least the weapon also doesn't work, so it, <laughs> it may not be functioning, but at least it's consistently not functioning on any system. Well, that's good. It's a start. I don't think it's good. I think it's just gonna flop around and be sad. Okay, so right now, it's backwards. Oh, the bottom plate. Either the top plate or the bottom plate needs to be flipped. But you're getting like a great sense of how frequently you have to put them together and take, <laughs> and them, take apart. them back. Apart. I'm starting to see that. Yeah, yeah. But it makes you like real well acquainted with your robot. So <laughs> doing very... repairs during the tournament, you're like, I've done this a exactly. thousand times. Yeah, exactly. and it always goes back together faster the second time. And exactly. Time. Yeah. That's beautiful. This this hose clamp is. It's it looks janky, but it is going to work. It is absolutely perfect. This is actually going to work. It's going to be a functional yeah. fighting robot. Yeah, yeah keep saying feel? that. <laughs> How does it feel to be working on your first ever combat robot? Right? I'm pretty, pretty dang excited. Yeah. When I was a kid, I remember I wanted to make a robot, and I got some, like, gift wrapping tubes and, like, yep, some yep. wires I found in my dad's garage, and I was yep. like, okay, now what? No. And kind of just got stuck at that part. <laughs> so this yeah. is a lifelong dream come true. Did we get How bigger? How did it get bigger? <laughs> oh, you adjusted your side, not mine. Uh, Do you want to measure it? 47 and a half. And that one's 45? Yes. Well, let's just cut a shorty for in here. Yeah, Rob was explaining that the go-kart he built doesn't work, that we are now committed to putting the cat on top of because the cat didn't work. We're gonna ignore that and yeah. just hope for the best. Prior to putting this on, we can test it and see what's Make wrong. Sure and then we'll attach the frame to the go-kart and then the cat to the frame. Easy. No problem. I got one and the batteries inside. It'll turn. It's fine. It'll turn. Yeah. The real pause barely turns, kind of. <laughs> it turns better than it goes forward and <laughs> backwards. It's going to be like we're pallbearers or something carrying it into the box. But it's going to be really funny because I made sure I didn't tell anybody about it. I think there's only one person who knows, and that's my wife. I don't really know. That was kind of disappointing because it didn't work at all. The chainsaw didn't even go for some reason. And then when we plugged the chainsaw in, it killed the servo for some reason. They're not even connected by a single wire. And now you work okay, you little sh I'm almost certain that servo is dead. Yeah, like straight up the chainsaw not working should not be an issue. Maybe the batteries are low. 
Oh, it's only one green. Where's the there's another one? It's here. Well, this works. Sounds pretty good though. It's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, electric shit's scary. <laughs> okay. So the weapon works in one direction. If we can't get the actuation, at least we still have something. Yeah, I'll just have to slowly chip away at my opponent from underneath. Yeah, I feel like we're just setting ourselves up for more disappointment if we use a fourth one. Yeah, let's just focus then on rigidly mounting the chainsaw so it doesn't flop the off. What we're gonna do is take more of this aluminum stuff and make brackets and like bend it and wherever we can screw it to the chainsaw, we'll screw it to the chainsaw and then wherever we can just screw it into the wood, we screw it into Perfect. the Perfect, get it nice and rigid. Probably like slight angle, like 20 degree or something maybe. Even where it is now. So yeah. we'll, we'll ditch this connection, we'll leave this servo in because we're sad mm -hmm. and we'll just switch this bar to something that mounts to the frame. So servo might make it not so top heavy too. Let's give it a little weight on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, now you're thinking. Yeah. Totally. What's this one? Do? 23.9. Okay. That's what you'd expect. But then this guy gives us two. Two. Which is really bad. So what we need to do is charge some six cells. We can probably put in one six cell on it and see if it'll move, but it probably needs 12 cell. And it is fantastic. It's a beast. It did things. We needed a win. <laughs> okay, Tom, we tried to get it to walk with a single stage of gearing, no dice. Added another stage, flexed itself out of portion, all caterwonky, not the way. So now we've yeah. added a crucial wheels. How are you gonna get those wheels on? What's left? We're gonna lift this big heavy thing on top of the chassis over there. It's gonna move. It's gonna be quick and smash everything in its path. So what, what are you gonna add to the second arm? We're either going cat paw or maybe a giant squeaky hammer. You haven't decided quite yet. I'll check the bins upstairs for our giant squeaky hammers. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna squash them, either with weight or with this devastating weapon. This is terrifying. This is this is scarier than my driver's test. It looks clear. You're gonna turn a little once you're up. Yeah. Ooh, butter. All right, I'm parked just over it's... there. You know, I'm pointing right at my car. Can you turn now? Oh, it turns to the left really well. I couldn't get it to turn to the left at all. All right. I don't think it's gonna fit. I Maybe don't think we so. just drive it all the way, just down the street. Is it street legal? It's legal enough. It's got a hashtag. All right, works for me. All right. I'll see you there. <laughs> oh yeah, she turns. in my little ear from a little birdie that something really big is about to grace our screens. It's All right. a big deal. Kyle, what is this? This is the <laughs> largest bot we have ever had at NHRL. This is Gigapod. This is in fact a 30 pound robot by exploiting several the loopholes that we have in the rules for weight bonuses. Yes, it's a little bit mini more. bots, unconventional locomotion, uh, adorableness. Adorableness. Meme ability. Yes. Pause is driving Gigapause. This is a pause mech. This what is, is this? from Team Bot Grinder. This is your villain, D Bot. Piloted by drone pilot Bot Grinder. Just put a chainsaw on it, why don't you? few things in human history that are truly unique. 
few things that you can confidently say have never happened before. We are witnessing one of those right now. This is the most important fight in NHRL history. <laughs> oh my god, he's got the first person view a drone here. Now this is an atypical way to control a robot. Wow! Oh, we're starting we are fully up right to off speed. the bat. Pause, working to bat, bat the chainsaw out of the way. Oh my god, and D-Shot is on fire! He is smoking, that is not supposed to happen. You can see that the chain is off of the chainsaw. Incredible! Paz is winning this fight! The net has come off. Wow. It's just shoving the chainsaw around like nothing. This is madness. This is NHRL. <laughs> Somehow, Gigapaz is the most mobile robot in the box. Wow, Gigapaz pushing flow They're into his opponents. Up. Oh, oh no. my god! Oh no! That chainsaw is looking haggard indeed. The paw. <laughs> wow, violent disassembly here mulching his opponent. This is very clearly a win for Gigapaz. A knockout for Gigapaz. Wow, Gigapaz is your winner! Wow. The crowd is calling for more brutality from Gigapaz. Oh no! No! Gigapaz burning out one of its motors. Wow. Gigapaws going out here. Uh, this could start a religion, I think. <laughs> We've got to be careful. I've uh, always wanted to see a big pause. <laughs> I never thought I would actually live to see the day. Bot Grinder, a fictional lounge singer, <laughs> and a former letter carrier walked into a bulletproof box, and that happened. That is my god now. <laughs> and I kneel before oh, it. <laughs> Oh, that was too much. Okay, everything about that was wonderful. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for all your help on all of that, homie. Thank you, that was awesome. You did get some good chainsaw shots and This in. is all cut yeah. up. Oh, yeah, 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 nice. Couple of my ball there, yeah. Yeah, Couple little ones. All right, I mean, the whole thing was super cool, right? But getting in the cage with the actual bot and hitting it with the chainsaw and seeing the sparks fly and the smoke and everything, that, that for real, that was it right there. Like, seeing it on TV and then experiencing it, so much different. The whole build went pretty well. We had a few little hangups, but it went pretty well. We got it got finished, in. that's yeah. huge. There's so many issues that we what? stumbled through in the build process with both of these robots and the fact that they worked when they needed to and they put on a good fight is everything. Yeah. And I'm so stoked and I'm really glad that you were able to make it out and Hell, I just yeah. appreciate it. I hope you come back. It worked, I'm coming back for sure. This is great. <sighs> Everything was perfect. It could not have gone any better. It was amazing. I can never top this. Sam and Rob and NHRL gave me this awesome experience to be able to do this, and I cannot thank them enough because I've always wanted to build a giant pause, and it's been like one of the most amazing days ever. Yo, you just blew through that stop sign. <laughs> yep.